So when we talk about properties of functions, it's important to understand there's a bit of a difference between certain properties. And the difference I'm going to say is global versus local. So this is actually quite a sophisticated comment I'm about to make. Um, global and local. And sometimes these are called absolute and relative. But when we're talking about global, global means a property of the whole function everywhere. So it's things that are true that are true or hold when considering the entire domain, so the entire thing. The whole domain. That's a global property. So the concept of being increasing or decreasing, so example, those are global properties in the way I've explained them. Okay, so F decreasing is global. F decreasing is global because it relies on A and B from the whole domain. So we need kind of A less than B implying FB, sorry, wrong around. So we need this to be true. Oh my goodness. We need this to be true for all for all A and B in domain. So if I'm drawing a graph, if I'm drawing a graph, let's say, I've got to be always decreasing the whole time. Always. I can't go up and then down again. I have to always be going down as I move from left to right the whole time. Okay? Now, a more refined and probably more difficult idea is the idea of a local property. And a local property is something that's only true when I am looking up close to a point on a graph, essentially, or a function. So these are things that are true. Things that are true when on some restriction of the domain. On some restriction of the domain. Okay, so let's do an example of this. So we could have, instead of saying a function is decreasing, we could say it's decreasing on some interval, say, or it's decreasing on some restriction. So we could have f decreasing on some restriction. As I said, some restriction of the domain. Okay, so EG is a fantastic example, one that's going to cause you real confusion if you're stuck in the world of thinking about decreasing means negative slopes. So let's do f of x is equal to 1 over x. This is a really wonderful example. Now, let's take a little moment here. The graph of this is one that perhaps you're familiar with, perhaps you're not. I'll tell you what it looks like now. It's a very standard graph, one you should know the basic shape of. It will be covered when we do power functions as our core functions, but it looks kind of like this. On the positive side, and this on the negative side. That's the, the graph, roughly speaking, okay? So it's easy to look at this and be like, oh, but look, it's it's decreasing because as I move from left to right, I'm going down. But it's not actually decreasing, not in a global sense. 
not in a global sense. The reason being, on the right over here, I'm always positive, and on the left, I'm negative. So in a sense, it's like I'm increasing, okay, because I switch from negative to positive if I let my input switch from negative to positive. So let's do this really carefully just to show you this actually is going to be the properties of your inequalities that you've seen before. So let's just imagine I'm only in the positive world over here. That looks like it's decreasing, right? So let's take two points over there. Sorry, let me do this correctly. So let's imagine I take A and B in the positive part with this property. Well, then what do I know? One of my properties of inequalities is, well, if they're both positive, when I take the reciprocals, it flips the inequality. In fact, let me write it as I have before. So this is one of my properties of inequalities that we wrote down. Flips it. Neat, right? So this is a property of inequalities. Okay, so what do I conclude from this? Well, it is decreasing, but only if I restrict the domain to something. So this implies f decreasing, but only if I restrict from zero to infinity. The same thing would work if I took a and b negative. If they were both strictly negative, I'd basically be on this side, and another one of my properties would guarantee the same thing. It would be a, a reverse. However, right, so if I choose any two things, it's not actually going to work. So however, if I was to choose, let's say, minus 2 and 3 on opposite sides of 0, then this is true. But when I take the reciprocal, this is negative, and that's still less than a third, which is positive. So that means it's not decreasing, right? This is preserving the inequality. To be decreasing globally, you've got to be decreasing always for any inputs. That's not the case here. So this tells you that this function f is not a decreasing function. overall on the whole domain maybe I'll say that just to really hammer home what I mean it's a weird one like I said this function can really mess with you because if you think to yourself well if I'm any one point and I'm moving to the right I'm going down that's kind of true right in the sense that if I'm here and I'm moving this way I'm going down if anywhere else on the graph the same thing is true but being decreasing is a global property. It's not just about being what's happening at a single point. It's got to be overall. And it's a kind of a complicated statement about the fact that if you're increasing the input, that has to will decrease the output. And if I choose an input there and an input there, it doesn't work. Right? By my properties of inequalities, essentially. So this is kind of an important subtlety and one that you're going to you've maybe never thought about particularly in detail but it's real important in calculus so understanding that some properties are global and some are local is, is vital so global properties generally speaking are more difficult to kind of verify because you've got to check loads more stuff right you've got to check that a function is doing something for everything in the domain whereas a local property can be much easier you could be just saying well all I've got to do is check it's increasing on this little interval for example so they are very similar, but they are quite different. And it's important you kind of think about them both. And finally, a very simple analogy here is, well, what's the highest mountain in the world? If I ask that question, well, the global highest mountain in the world is Mount Everest, right? But if I say, well, let's restrict it to Scotland, then the highest mountain in Scotland is Ben Nevis. So when you're talking about height of height above sea level for example so of land above sea level it, you could make it a global or a local property it's kind of the difference between the two so next time we'll look at more basic properties of functions